Welcome back to Huckabee. This is our special Republican presidential forum. And joining us now is Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. Congressman, good to have you here. Thank, Thank you. Very nice much. to be here. Your first question comes from Ken Cuccinelli. Ken. Okay. Congressman, you advocate for pure constitutionalism. Given that filter, what do you think are the three primary domestic responsibilities of the federal government? Domestic responsibility. Domestic well, responsibility. Um, protecting the borders. Uh, providing a sound economy, a sound currency, uh, that's in the Constitution very clear, and it's a, that's a major issue. And, and, and really, in, in uh, enforcing the Bill of Rights, I mean, that, those are very specific in looking at all, and that would be property rights as well as uh, freedom of speech and all those other things. So those would be, those would be the major issues. Force the Constitution overall would be, be a major issue as well. Congressman, good evening to you. In 1995, we lost 168 Oklahomans in a domestic terrorist attack. Uh, my assistant attorney general, Melissa Houston, is a survivor of that blast and has spent many years after that utilizing tools of the Patriot Act fighting domestic terrorism. You have come out opposed to the Patriot Act based upon constitutional privacy concerns, and I too share some of your, con your concerns with respect to privacy. But what substantive or thoughtful alternative do you have to the Patriot Act to prevent further acts of domestic terrorism in the future. Well, what, the one thing is, is that you say your goal is preventing all crimes and all, all criminal acts. I mean, you destroy liberty by doing that. But the Patriot Act, uh, if it would have been called the repeal of the Fourth Amendment, it wouldn't have passed. That's essentially what that does. So that's way too much sacrifice of, of liberty. But, uh, you, you know, there are laws in the books for, for violent acts. But if you think you can pass enough laws to prevent all crimes and all acts, acts of violence, just think of the acts of violence occur in our households, you know, uh, uh, accidents, are you going to put cameras in every household or whatever? So there are, enough, I don't think it's a lack of laws that is our problem. So Congressman, you don't believe that there needs to be a comprehensive law at the federal level equipping law enforcement to prevent domestic terrorism in this country? I, I don't believe we need a comprehensive law at the federal level. I believe we need state laws against violence. Uh, the, uh, the one law that we do have at a national level that uh, we totally ignore, and that is that uh, uh, terrorism is a crime and it's not a war. And yet we have drifted off to being called this is a war on terrorism and it's a justification to pursue war, uh, not only around the, around the world, but even domestically. So I would say it's a crime. But the Constitution, I think, is very clear. There's nothing in our Constitution that says that violent acts should be a prerogative of the government. They didn't offer a national police force. I mean, uh, even today, I mean, if you're talking about uh, criminal acts of violence, murder, manslaughter, uh, uh, robbery, that's all a state issue. This nationalization of law enforcement, I mean, we have already 100,000 federal bureaucrats carrying guns. We don't need any more federal policemen. And uh, I, I think think that uh, the problem isn't a lack of federal laws and federal policemen. Congressman, what would you call the attacks right around the corner on the Twin Towers in New York City? What would you call those? Well, that's an act of violence. And it's a Is criminal. that an act of terrorism, Congressman? Yeah, it, it's a terrorist attack. And, uh, and and, and, uh, and, and we do have responsibility when, uh, you know, from protecting our borders and all, but it's an act of, act of terrorism, and we have responsibility. We should be checking our borders and finding out who's, who's coming in, but we ought to understand that whole, that whole problem uh, rather than, than just saying that what we need is more, more federal policemen and it's a lack of federal police activity and federal guns that will make us safer. But if you don't understand exactly the motivation and all the problems Problems of why we're facing this crisis and why people want to come here and kill us. Uh, just more laws won't do it. I mean, this, this whole thing is all messed up because what we have been told for 10 years is that people want to come here and commit acts of terrorism against us because we're free and prosperous. As Different long topic. as people believe that, believe me, you're not going to solve the problem. You're not going to make the people any safer. We don't want you to run out of time. Different topic, Congressman Paul. President Obama has had the audacity to say that the Republican approach to the economy means dirtier air, dirtier water, and less people with health insurance. 
Is that really what less federal regulation means? <laughs> Hardly. Matter of fact, I get charged with that all the time, you know, because I don't want the federal regulations, and uh, most Republican conservatives don't need or think we need more federal regulation. And they say, oh, you're going to have, you know, people in the streets and no medical care. The whole thing is, if you don't have regulation, say, uh, in, in the environment and different things, or uh, regulations on banking regulations, uh, actually, the market is a real strict regulation. It's a stricter regulation. Our problem today is when you write the regulations, say, on, uh, on, on drugs, the drug companies get involved and they write the regulations. Banking regulations are written by the banking community. They become the lobbyists. So it isn't the lack of, of lack of regulation. But if you have the market, you have property rights, you have contract rights, and, and you have bankruptcy laws, those are strictly enforced. It wasn't the lack of regulations that caused the Enron scandal, but it was the market market that took care of it. Those, those individuals were convicted in Texas court for fraud and they went to prison. So, uh, no, we have to answer back. I think we do a lousy job on that, uh, saying that they, the liberals grab the moral high ground and say that we're going to take care of everybody. If you don't do it, people are going to be suffering. There won't be any medical care. So uh, it is up to us to argue the case that uh, the market can answer that. The, the, the free market and property rights can solve just about all these problems. Much much better than more bureaucrats in Washington. Congressman, we have to take a break at this point. And, uh, we'll for the next question, Scott Pruitt. Congressman, you have said on Fox News Sunday that Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are unconstitutional. I presume that means that you will eliminate those programs. <laughs> yeah. How will you do that? You, you think so? Uh, yeah, I, I do believe. So tell you me know, how. Tell me you how. all work on uh, Obamacare, and you talk about it being unconstitutional because there's a mandate. but. How many other programs in medicine do we have? They're all mandates. Does anybody get not to have to pay uh, Medicare taxes? I mean, it's all. No, I, I, I look at Article 1, Section 8. Where does it say anything that the government should be involved in education or medicine? So the question is, but how do you get rid but of how, it? How do you do it? Well, uh, you, don't, you can't do that overnight. Matter of fact, uh, I go to extreme of saying that for, the, for those individuals who have been totally dependent, children and the elderly right now, to start with that to cut our budget, because we have such as this horrible budget crisis, I said would be just uh, create anarchy. It would be so bad. But if we want to save this country, we have to cut. So I have a program where I want to cut a trillion dollars. It's a bunch of it comes from overseas, and a bunch of it comes from five departments. Going back to the budget of 06, actually, I would preserve some of these programs. And when I present this program, I says for the purpose of phasing them out. For instance, my program actually allows people under 25 to get out of Social Security. But to cut that off and make that and think you can do that overnight uh, isn't going to work. So you have to have a transition program. But technically speaking, they asked me, are they constitutional? No, where is the where is the authority? I don't I don't know where the authority is. Uh, there's no authority for one penny to be spent at the federal government to run education, and uh, and I, I think that uh, that's where we're why we're in such this trouble. There's no respect at all for the Constitution, Congressman. If uh, you, you, you're very clear, you think they're unconstitutional. Why would you sign a budget that contains something unconstitutional? <laughs> because you, other than that, you're going to you, you have two choices. You either can work our way out of this, or you wait until it collapses and we have to rebuild it. And I'm just saying. Right. that you can't, uh, even on the Federal Reserve, everybody knows my position on the Federal Reserve, I, and it's unconstitutional, but I don't advocate that you close down the Federal Reserve tomorrow. I advocate competing currencies and work out it, so I have transition programs, Okay, and, me, uh, and that makes a big difference. Okay, let me move to another topic. Which comes first in your mind, the sovereignty of the people, the sovereignty of the states, or the sovereignty of the federal government, and please put them in order. Well, well, the people in the states and, uh, and, and, and then the federal government, and a very little for the federal government, and, okay. none, and none for international governments like the U.N. and NATO to get authority for the things that we do around the world. Okay. Yes. Congressman, are there any amendments to the Constitution that you believe are mistakes? That I believe what? Are mistakes. Are mistakes? Yes. Well, uh, there was one... Try to keep it to a few. Pardon me? <laughs> Try to keep it to a few. 
I'm not quite hearing you, but when you say you said quiet, try to keep it to a few. Oh, a few. Uh, yes. On the, uh, on, and you said to amendments to the Constitution. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you okay. Um, well, one of, the, one of the worst was the prohibition, which led to a, a horrible decade, and then we repealed that one. The repeal one uh, was, was very great. So, um, no, there, uh, there's, there's not, I mean, obviously the Bill of Rights, those are amendments, and they're great. So, uh, uh, there's um, uh, the, the other ones are sort of uh, not enough for me to get riled up about, but uh, I'm I'm so concerned about not following the the Constitution that we have on on the property rights and rule of law and and uh, the monetary issues and going to war issues. Those are the kind of things I'm very I'm concerned sure. about in the Constitution. We're, we're in we're our short, final minute, by the short way. Short on so. time. Quick question: If you could suggest every American read one book, what would it be? <laughs> One book, uh, excluding something uh, religious or oriented. Could be. Uh, it could be. Well, uh, I, I think uh, to simplify things, to get a message out, since we're talking about politics and the law, people, if they want to read a short book to really wake them up on what the law should be, they should read a book called The Law. By Bastia, if they read that and find out the moral principle behind law, saying that you as an individual uh, can't do certain things, but if you can't do it, the government can't do it. If you can't steal from your neighbor, you can't send a politician to steal from your neighbor. The law is a basic principle worth starting with, and I think it would introduce a great idea to a lot of people. Thank you, Congressman Ron Paul.